Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and this is the analog SPWM card. This card is generating the required SPWM signals to produce a pure sine wave at the output of an inverter controlled by an edge bridge. So without any further ado, let's get started in the building of this project. I had previously made a project demonstrating the concept of SPWM by comparing two triangular waves and generating the required output. That was a pretty simple concept and this analog SPWM card is kind of the follow up of this project. I have documented the detailed overview of this project in the PDF which is available to view and download from my website, the link to which will be in the video description. Coming to the generation of SPWM, let us first have a look at what SPWM signals are. SPWM signal stands for sinusoidal pulse width modulation and it is a type of square wave signal whose duty cycle changes with respect to the amplitude of a given signal, in our case a sine wave. To generate the SPWM signal, we basically need two independent signals. First one is the sine wave to which we wanted to convert it into SPWM and a carrier signal. Over here, the carrier signal is usually a high frequency triangular wave, the frequency of which is much higher than that of the sine wave. These two waves are then compared through a comparator and we get the SPWM signal with varying duty cycle according to the amplitude of the sine wave. Now we look at the concept of how we can use this SPWM signal to drive the edge bridge in order to get an AC waveform at the output. Over here you can see that we have a pair of complementary outputs which can be controlled and given to switch S1 and S4 making one pair and the other pair being S2 and S3. I have color coded the complementary pairs with red and blue so as to get a proper clarity. In the first half of the signal generation, S1 and S4 are active and in the second half, S2 and S3 are active. In this case, we will get complementary SPWM output which can later be filtered out to get the AC waveform. I have put the concept in proper detail through my PDF, you are free to check it out. A question naturally arises, why use the analog SPWM module and take the hassle and trouble of building such complicated analog circuit where more, com more easily available ASIC controlled and microcontroller based SPWM generators like the EGS002 are easily available. Well, this project has more to do with learning about the different analog components like comparators, oscillators, timers, crystal, crystals, analog switches, etc. and how we can combine them to create a meaningful circuit. The analog SPWM card is probably not a good substitute to the ASIC controlled EGS002 but it can generate quite stable sine wave signals which can actually be used as an output for inverters. This is the block diagram of the entire analog SPWM card circuit. As you can see that the clock source for this entire circuit is a 4.096 MHz crystal. This clock source is then fed into the IC4060 which is a frequency divider or a binary counter IC. The output frequency from this 4060 is 16 kHz which acts as our carrier frequency. It also generates a signal of 500 Hz which is then given to the IC7490 which is essentially a mod 10 counter. This divides the input frequency by 10 and we have our 50 Hz square wave. So the final outputs of these two IC is the 16 kHz carrier frequency and the 50 Hz square wave. These two frequencies are then passed through a low pass filter and using active clamping they are both converted into triangular waves. These triangular waves are compared using a comparator circuit consisting of operational amplifiers and then we have our raw SPWM signals as we saw earlier. These raw SPWM signals are not ideal to be given as input to the edge bridge and so some wave shaping circuits are required. After the signal passed through the wave shaping circuits, a buffer circuit is required so as to maintain the shape of the SPWM signal. In a sense, after all the wave shaping and the filtering, we have four signals, two complementary SPWM signals and two complementary 50 Hz signals as we discussed earlier in this section. Probably the most important part of this circuit is generation of stable frequencies for which I've used the crystal oscillator which eliminates any frequency drift due to temperature changes. 
Over here, the 4060IC provides us with the stable carrier frequency of 16 kHz and the 500 Hz, which is later given to the IC7490, which divides the 500 Hz by 10, giving us the 50 Hz signal. 50 Hz is a standard frequency for AC in most countries over the world. With the 50 Hz and the 16 kHz square wave signal obtained, it is now time to convert them into triangular waves, which can be compared to later on generate these signals. For this, I have used a low pass filter consisting of RC circuits. I have also used active clamping so as to keep the amplitude of both the signals within the same range so that they can be compared with equal magnitudes in mind. Another point to keep here in mind is that the 50Hz signal generated from the 7490 cannot be directly used to generate the complementary pair of 50Hz signal. The reason being simple, the initial 50Hz that is being generated is passed to the low pass filter to generate the triangular waves. This also creates a phase shift of nearly 90 degrees as demonstrated in the figure here. So the triangular waves needs to be compared again to create the square wave and then the complementary square waves can further be created using operational amplifiers. With the complementary pair of square waves generated, it is now time to have a look at how the SPWM signal along with its corresponding square wave signal looks like. The SPWM signal needs to have a little bit of wave shaping so as to keep the entire shape and size of the pulse width constant. This involves adjusting a voltage levels of few operational amplifiers and adjusting the amplitude of the triangular waves as well. The image here represents how the corresponding SPWM signal and the square wave look like. This SPWM and the square wave create a pair which can be given to the diagonal pair of the edge bridge for the first half of the signal. And finally we have a pair of complementary SPWM pulses each of which lasts for roughly 10 milliseconds completing a total time period of 20 milliseconds in one full cycle. 20 milliseconds corresponds to 50 Hz in frequency domain. We also have successfully generated complementary pairs of 50 Hz square wave pulses, the frequency of which is also 50 Hz. Now in conclusion, we have 4 signals, 2 complementary pairs of SPWM followed by 2 complementary pairs of pulse signals which can directly be given to the edge bridge in the scheme as discussed earlier to provide us with the AC waveform. With all the 4 control signals, it is now time to put it as an input to the edge bridge and evaluate the output. And this is what the output looks like. It is not quite the sine wave that we have expected, but we can clearly see the inverted magnitudes of the individual SPWM signals of the half cycle. The sine wave can be obtained by putting this SPWM signals through an LC low pass filter, which is the next step of our project. You can also see that we have a dead time of 130 microseconds in between the switching of the two half cycles. After the filtration, we get the clean sine wave that we have been looking for. As you can see, now we have a clean sine wave after processing the SPWM AC signal through the LC low pass filter. It is not quite the ideal sine wave that we would expect, but it can be easily fixed with minor adjustments in the duty cycle of the SPWM signal. Over here, you can see that as I remove the filter, we again get back our digital representation of SPWM. 
The LC low pass filter is what enables the SPWM signal to become the sine wave at the output of the inverter. The values of this L and C are critical with respect to the carrier frequency. I hope you like this video and if so feel free to share your feedbacks and suggestions in the comment section. All the relevant links to the documents and other projects will be there in the video description. Let me know if you want me to make a detailed video regarding the theory of this analog SPWM card. Till then consider subscribing to my channel and I will see you in the next video.